Today I have each one of the X macros that I want to compare and contrast. So that way you get an idea if you're looking at one of these guns, like which one is the best? Is it worth going with the comp? TAC Ops, or even the base model. Hopefully I can help you out. I'm gonna give you the pros and cons, show you how they shoot, and I'm gonna tell you which one I think is the best and why at the end of the video. So if any of this helps you out, consider subscribing. Really appreciate y'all. Let's go ahead and get into it. The P365 in general changed up concealed carry. It took, you know, six and seven round carry guns up to a minimum of 10 and that standard has been set now for many years and from there they went with the XL or the X now and then they went with the X macro. The X macro kind of fills the gap for people that like a full size gun, full size grip, but they want the thinness of a micro nine and that's what this gun provides. Another thing that they changed from the P365 to the X to the X macro is the lower frame module. And that's kind of the, the heart of the X macro in a way, because now we have a Picatinny rail up front as opposed to the proprietary rail on the P365s. We have a longer grip. So each one of the X macros I'm gonna show you today is 5.2 inches in height. They're all 6.6 .6 inches in overall length and the weight ranges. So like the X macro that you see right here without the dot, of course, is like 21 and a half ounces. The TAC Ops is 22.8 and the base model is 22 ounces. So essentially you have a full size gun with a really thin grip that's about the length of a Glock 19 and it gives you two additional rounds. So the X macro that we're looking at here, this is the comp version, comes with two 17 round mags it also has the integrated comp. So that's where they get the name. And so this is designed to keep that muzzle down and make it as flat shooting as possible. One issue that you may run into, or, or that some people run into with these smaller micro nines is that they can be fairly hard to shoot. And so they made a gun that's a little bit bigger, thinner, but it makes it a much easier gun to actually shoot. We have a viewport so we can see our brass down in the chamber. And then I'm rocking one of the Romeo X's on here. And by the way, SIG sent these guns so I can show them off to you. So I'm super appreciative of that. They also sent their new Romeo X, which I'm pretty excited about because their old Romeos, I, I was not a fan of, not at all. You have buttons on the outside here that are super tactile. You can get to them. There's no more digging your finger on the inside of the, of the optic to try to get to that one single button that was just awful. You also have the battery is on the outside of the optic. So you don't have to take the thing off, which is great. They also have fiber optics that are on the back with this nice cutout. So it's going to co-witness with your uh, original x-ray sights. Each one of these has the x-ray sights too, by the way, which are some of the best pistol sights on the market in my opinion. Blacked out tritium in the rear, that nice green dot in the front with the tritium insert. So this whole thing co-witnesses, it's got a nice clear dot on it. It's got the MOTAC, so the motion activated system in it. It is a step above <laughs> what they were putting out before. So I'm really happy that they have these out now. This one has a little bit of an extended beaver tail and pretty much all of the triggers are about the same. They're flat face triggers and you're gonna get very little travel. So you get to the wall quickly and then it pulls right through. There's not a ton of travel in this trigger. It's set a little bit forward because if you look at it, you got a little bit smaller grip so one thing they do really well, and this is the medium grip on here, by the way, it comes with interchangeable back straps too, which is nice. But with the medium size grip, I could probably go down to small for this one and have even a better reach to the trigger. Although I saw no real issues, the thinner the gun, especially guns that don't have back straps, you're kind of stuck with what you got unless you add something to the grip uh, and there's nothing you can really take away. So having the reach where it's set, I think is ideal. 
And like I said, I would probably put the small version on there, give me just a little bit better reach to that trigger. But overall, it is set really nicely. We have a standard slide release on this gun, takedown lever, magazine release is in a great position. If you notice, magazines pop right out of the gun. And then of course we have a pretty awesome grip texturing. It's not too aggressive, but it is aggressive enough where I can get a solid purchase on the gun. Plus it's pretty much full size grip, which is nice too. Uh, front and rear slide serrations there. Overall, just a really awesome package. These things come in though at like, you know, 800 to $850. So they're on the upper end when it comes to cost. Next one we're gonna cover is the Tac Ops. Now I'm not gonna bore y'all and cover every single detail that we just went over, but I will touch on the things that are important that differentiate all three of these, right? So pretty much everything is the same that we just talked about, okay? The difference is instead of two magazines that comes with the comp, this one comes with four 17 round magazines. It also has an extended mag well there. So it makes, in, you know, getting those mags in and out, especially in, a little bit easier. And so I really like the way they've set that for my hand specifically, it kind of creates a, a good stopping point on the grip. I don't know, it just, it fits my hands really well. It comes with the x-ray sights, but one thing you'll notice is it doesn't have the comp. What that does is obviously it's going to affect the muzzle rise as you're about to see, but we also get a little bit longer barrel. So on the comp version, you have a 3.1 inch barrel. The rest of that length is made up with that integrated comp that's in the slide. By the way, all three of these have a stainless steel fire control unit, stainless steel slide, carbon steel barrel, nitron finish, by the way. But this one actually has a 3.7 inch barrel. So you get a little bit more velocity there, which is kind of nice. It is still optics ready, by the way. Your footprint, by the way, is the RMS Shield. So your Delta Point Pro, EPS Carry, Romeo Zero. I think Bushnell makes one that's in that footprint as well. So uh, either way, it's gonna accommodate quite a few optics without the need of any kind of plates. And it does fit with the Romeo X too, of course, which <laughs> if you're gonna compare the X to the Romeo Zero, go with the X. I promise you, you will not be disappointed uh, when we compare those two. Now, one thing you'll notice too, is that this actually has the extended slide release. So that allows us to get a much better uh, drop on it. And if you just use it as a slide stop, which is what I do most of the time anyways, it's just much easier to get to. All of the controls on the X macros are designed to be as flush as possible because you know they're designed for concealed carry. It is still nice to have that little bit of an extension there so we can really get down on that thing and drop it if needed. Or again, when we're, when we're manipulating the slide, it's just easier to work with. I feel no less competent with this one than the other one. So obviously having the red dot, I can pick up everything a little bit more um, or a little bit quicker, but the felt recoil between the two is a minimal difference. So we have the comp version, which is 800 to 850. We have the TAC Ops, which is 750. Then we have the base version of the X Macro. Same lower frame. What this one is missing is we don't have the extended magwell and we don't have the extended slide release, but it is still optics ready. It has the x-ray sights. It does not have the comp, but it has the 3.7 inch barrel. Front and rear slide serrations, same module. It has the interchangeable back straps, same trigger, and it will accommodate that extended magwell. So if you like that of the tack ops, that's something you can always put on this gun later. And what's nice about this one is if you want a manual safety, you can get the manual safety option on this gun. By the way, this one comes with two 17 round max. So you may be asking yourself, we go from 650 up to $800 essentially. We have a $150 difference. Is that worth it? Well, we still have to talk about the way they shoot, which is really important to this whole conversation. It was 
clear that the comp version actually does a little bit better job of keeping that muzzle down. So it's working as it's designed to work, right? That comp really helps to just ever so slightly, but at the range, and you can see that on camera, clearly. You can feel it a little bit, right? But it wasn't so significant that I was like, man, the comp is way better. It's kind of like when I shoot the Spectra comp, right? Compared to the regular P365. There is a pretty massive difference between those two guns. You can really tell that the traditional P365 without the comp, it's a snappy little piece, right? And I mean, it, it, you can't deny physics, you know, you have to give and take somewhere, but it's a really concealable gun. So if you get a little bit bigger gun in the Spectra comp, and of course with that integrated comp, it just does a, a fantastic job. It's a stark contrast though is what I'm trying to get at. Because these guns are basically, they are the same size, same dimensions, a little bit different in, in weight, 21 and a half ounces, 22 ounces, it really wasn't as noticeable as you may think it was. All right. Ready there, Mikey? Yeah. All right, we got the original X Macro first. That is spot on. I can't tell y'all how much better this Romeo X is compared to those old uh, Romeos they had. That's a nice shooting gun. I am impressed with that. Yeah, I gotta be honest with y'all, man. When it comes to the recoil, I, I don't know if the integrated comp, I mean, it's a nice feature. It does help a little bit, but I don't know if it helps enough to like say, oh my God, I have to have that version. You know what I mean? Very nice, dude. So what you see on camera and what I felt, like I said, it was just a slight variation. Now you may be asking, hey, why'd you put an optic on this one, but you didn't put one on the other two? Well, there is a reason for that. Well, I forgot them at the house, if I'm being honest. I meant to put them on the day before, which is what I normally do. I just kind of ran out of time and then I left them at the house. So kind of well, you know, it is what it is, but that's the nice part about this. Even if you're going to run this without an optic, which I still run my Spectra Comp without an optic, you know, up to this point anyways. And it does a great job because these sights are so good. So what about the pros and cons of each? Well, they're all very similar to each other. So the, the pros are you have a super thin full size gun, essentially when carried outside the waistband, which is where I designate this gun, it really is a fantastic carry piece. And we're coming into fall and winter, and that's when I carry outside the waistband the most because I can have a jacket on. I can still conceal it with that jacket because I carry in a holster contour. So if you're looking for a good outside the waistband holster that's still concealable, it's not so large that you know you really can't conceal it, I'll make sure I leave a link and a discount code to the holster contour so you can check that out if you want to. 
but this is a great outside the waistband piece for me personally. You know, they're relatively lightweight when you compare them to other full-size guns. I think the Glock, Glock 19 is like 22 ounces, but the Glock 19 is a 15 round gun, standard, and it's a lot thicker than what you get in the X Macro. So it's basically a full-size gun that is really thin and they shoot really well too. So if you are sensitive to recoil, or maybe you want to teach somebody, like, you know, let's use this example. You, you want a, a, a carry gun, an outside the waistband carry, maybe even potentially inside the waistband carry, depending on who you are. But you want to be able to teach somebody on this gun and, you know, just do a variety of different things with it. Maybe you want it for home defense. We have the standard 1913 style rail there. This is a really great option. It's going to integrate with this Romeo X as far as your backup site, so that's taken care of. It can offer a lot to somebody that wants it, but what is the biggest difference between these and which one would I go with? So if we look at the TAC Ops version and the base version, essentially we can add everything from the TAC Ops to our base version down the line if you want to. So you can buy the more inexpensive one and then I think the extended magwell is 50 bucks from SIG. The extended slide release is $30. So you're at 80 bucks there. The magazines now are like 60 bucks each. They're kind of, ex they are expensive to be honest with you. And this one comes with two additional magazines. So if those two additional magazines are worth it, I'd say in and of itself, just go with the TAC Ops. But again, the fact that we can get an X macro for 650 bucks with everything this offers is a really good value. And like I said, we can add everything from the TAC Ops. If you know you wanna get something else, if you wanna get a holster, or you wanna get you know additional ammo, you just don't wanna spend the extra $100 right up front, you're not limited to just the base model, right? You can do some really cool things with this. Now, if you want to go with the comp version, that's where things change a little bit, right? It, you know, doing the slide and all of that, which is the biggest part of this and the fact that you have different barrels here, you know, this may be a better option for you. But in my opinion, I think the base is the best value. Like I didn't feel like I was missing a whole lot when we shot the base version of the gun. I felt more than adequate with the gun and I felt like I could do pretty much everything with it that I could with the X macro. Is this one a little nicer to shoot? Yeah, it is. Is it nice that I have the controls of the TAC Ops there? It's a little bit easier to get your magazines in and you know manipulate your slide with the extended slide release? Yes, but I didn't feel as though this one was just clearly inferior to these other two. So that's kind of where I'm at with it, man. I think the base overall is the best value. And I think if you go with something like this, then you will be more than satisfied uh, with what this gun has to offer. But these are the three that SIG offers at this moment in time. So if you have an X macro and you decided, you know, hey, I went with this version or that version, or maybe you're looking at one and this video helped you, love to hear from y'all down in the comments, man. And if you like what I do, consider subscribing or you can join us right here on Patreon or on YouTube as well. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.